Hey guys. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Steph and I owe you guys an explanation because I went from posting every single day doing like before vlogmas, doing vlogmas, all of this sort of stuff to going completely radio silent. Now, I didn't go radio silent because I didn't want to vlog and I didn't want to like communicate with you guys and stuff. Um, but if you guys caught like we're up on vlogmas, you will know that I had really, really bad anxiety. And my anxiety got so bad that I was actually starting to have very physical symptoms of anxiety. I felt like I was gonna throw up all the time. I was throwing up at points. I couldn't sleep. I was sleeping a lot. Like it was just really out of control and I could no longer manage it and do kind of everything that I wanted to do. And that sucks. It's such a terrible position to be in. So I sat down and I decided to film a sit down video explaining why I'm not in therapy. And I have decided that I'm just not gonna post that because since that video, stuff has changed for me and I'm very grateful and I'm very fortunate to be in this position. So I just wanna say like I didn't dip because I don't want to vlog, like vlog and do all that sort of stuff. It was to the point where I couldn't vlog and like keep up with the editing and everything and take care of myself properly like take care of my mental health properly there was just so much going on and i also didn't feel like if i were to vlog like i know that uh there are people out there who feel like filming them in their darkest point is very therapeutic and or could help other people that's great that's not me um i don't nest like i i don't want people to feel alone in their anxiety of course but i also don't want to normalize like being that low because i think nobody should feel that way and i don't want like that to be something that is just like you know <laughs> Like, I, I don't glorify it, I don't wanna normalize it, nothing. Because I think mental health is a real struggle and a real burden and I want to share with you guys when I'm struggling, but I don't want to over, like I don't wanna oversimplify it or glamorize it or whatever because honestly in a video, even if I say I'm really struggling with anxiety or show you guys I'm really struggling with anxiety, my day gets disseminated down into maybe 10 or 15 clips and sometimes like obviously like there's just like not everything is going to be shown and i don't even know if it could be conveyed properly so i just decided it was not good plus it would have been every single day me being like i'm not feeling great like all of this and after i think people who don't struggle with anxiety would find that really tiring but also people who struggle from anxiety might find that very triggering. So yeah, all in all, it was the best choice for me to just like not film. And here we are. So um, I just wanna pop in and say there are a couple of videos from before that I will get to editing, but everything is gonna be kind of weird now, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm gonna continue with Vlogmas if I'm being honest. I will film a vlog, like a Boston vlog, but I just cannot commit to daily vlogging right now. I just, like I, I've been feeling better for probably a, three days, four days now, maybe not even. Um, like maybe four days ago was the last time I felt like really, really nauseous. So I'm doing better, thankfully. Um, but it was like a, it, it was a very, very difficult Meant, like I like the only way that I got out of that is I made a really really tough mental call for myself where effectively I had to get myself into a headspace where I was like if x y and z don't happen if this falls apart if this doesn't 
work out like you're going to get through it and I had to just completely like change my mindset like completely look at how I was like thinking how everything was so like end of the world and it was so important and it was so do or die and everything and I had to just like completely divorce myself from that and say no like if this ends you will get through it this is not as this is not what it used to be you can find something better somewhere else right like all that so and I've alluded I've had a, like I have been feeling very off socially and that is what like really kicked this off is not feeling like some of my support system is there anymore and part of it is like reaching out to other people um and like finding out who I can rely on and and also just very much coming to a place where I have to realize like the only constant is going to be me and I am the only like constant and I'm the only like for sure support in my life unfortunately um I obviously have a partner and I'm very grateful for him um and he, he's very stable we're very sta like you know but there's always the but right and I think because Maybe what my mistake was that led me to this point was not recognizing who, what, what I was actually not getting from the relationships early enough in the relationships to act accordingly. And now it's like, oh, so much has been invested, right? So anyways. There's a bunch of that sort of stuff. I don't know if I'll ever really talk about it because it's really upsetting for me. But yeah, it is what it is. So I still feel adrift socially, if I'm being honest, but I feel better about it. Like I am in a better place with what happened and what's gone on and what's gone down. So yes, I do want to apologize for dipping. I didn't mean to just dip out on Vlogmas. That was not the intention here. But I really needed to get myself right and there was no other way that I did. Like, I think I just, maybe just, like, I don't even know if I necessarily worked for a couple days. I just very much, yeah, like, knocked off. But, like, the real changing point for me was I... I guess like something that always kind of comes down like comes up is like so it always comes down to like who you're with and all this sort of stuff and I think every once in a while I just forget that I like, there are people in my life who have gone through like similar experiences and stuff like that and that it's okay to like talk to them about this sort of stuff um so yeah I just saw like a bunch of my like hometown friends and stuff and that really helped because I feel like there are there's like obviously like there's like my high school friends and my grade school friends and like friends who I have from like the area I'm from and sometimes like I, I love my friends from university don't get me wrong but I think so many people can attest to this when they grew up in like a very specific bubble for lack of a better word because where I grew up was a bubble like a literal bubble um sometimes like hanging out with people who have grown up in the same place it just removes a little bit of like filter maybe for lack of a better word I guess because it's like we all had like the same experiences for so long or similar experiences for so long that it's sometimes nice like I mean I don't condone staying in the bubble 100% of the time not about that life but what I have figured out is that me like hanging out with my friends from my hometown and stuff and like where I grew up 
it is like a nice safe space that is so different from anything else and like I said like I've said before with like reconnecting with my childhood best friend there is nothing like it like there is nothing like those relationships and every relationship is different but I feel like it's just like there are so many people who just absolutely will drain your social battery but that like core group of people that you have who have known you since you were like uh you know early teens or younger whatever it is ju it just hits different sometimes and sometimes you just need that like sometimes you just need that like really easy companionship and i think that's what i needed is like just very easy low stress like people who have been through the ups and the downs and whatever so shout out to my hometown friends love them need, need them in my life so yeah it was like a combination of things but i think just finally like getting out of my little isolation bubble and going and hanging out with people who have seen like who have been with me through enough phases of my life like we've been together through enough phases of our lives like high school university grad school whatever boyfriends girlfriends whatever has been really nice um and yeah just like just doing a much better job of communicating with my friends and boyfriend and parents and whatever so yeah um that's kind of like what happened and how i pulled myself out and then a couple other things that i've like pulled my, like realized and stuff um a lot of my anxiety okay there's like a low lying le like there's a, a lying level of anxiety which is my like sense of self and like relationships and all that sort of stuff right but some of my anxiety is also what has been determined is um i guess i would say it's environmental anxiety and you guys know that I go back and forth between my parents' house and my house. And I have been at my parents' house a lot for a number of reasons. There have been doctor's appointments, there have been surgeries, there have been just tons of busy, busy days in the office and all this sort of stuff. But being at home and all this sort of stuff means you're not on your own schedule. And with writing and social media and with my etsy shop and like all of these other little things that i like to devote a little bit of time to here and there um or even just like eating on my own schedule and not having somebody else's schedule you know impact my day that's really tough to avoid when you're living at home especially in such a small family like mine um, and so that has given me also a lot of anxiety because there are a lot of things that I want to do that I don't have time to do because my time is being spent doing things that other people want me to do. And nine times out of 10, I'm okay with it, but I would really like a little bit more time to do my own thing. And I have to figure out how to do that. So yeah, anyways, now the final point of all of this and i think there's going to be maybe questions about this being like your anxiety is so bad like why aren't you in treatment and blah 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 okay let me first explain one i'm not employed by anybody i'm self-employed well okay i am employed by a startup but like the startup doesn't have health insurance so i'm technically speaking the majority of my income is through my self-employed real estate work then i am employed at a startup as an operations officer and then i have social media and like my other income sources right so primarily being an independent contractor being self-employed you don't get employer-based health care insurance i have what's called ohip which is the ontario health insurance plan which every resident of ontario who is a canadian citizen a pr and i think certain visa holders also have access to ohip if i'm not mistaken have it if you are a university student you can get something called uhip which is the university so the university health insurance plan it's the same thing it's actually better uhip has better coverage than ohip does um because your ohip and your uhip will stack and uhip has a pharmaceutical plan and i think a dental plan if i'm not mistaken but definitely a pharmaceutical plan where you only pay dispensary fees for certain medications so if you are an ontario university student and you're not taking advantage of uhip 
take advantage of it. Um, also, UHIP will cover, I believe, um, therapy sessions on your um, at your like guidance office, your counseling, whatever. So I in university got access to like counseling services um, for like anxiety and ADHD and stuff. Not that I, okay, so I technically don't have ADHD. I have something else, but I'm put into the ADHD, ADD spectrum for some reason, even though I don't have ADD. Um, but that's, yeah, so I got access to counseling through that and then I kind of just weaseled my way into making that like actual, like normal psychotherapy. So yeah. Um, so since undergrad, I haven't had coverage. And then for like three years, my anxiety wasn't really bad at all. And then last winter, my anxiety got really bad, like really horrifically bad. And it's been, it, it wasn't actually as bad as this round. So this round is bad. And then I've had two other episodes where it's been this bad. Once um, in 2016 and once in 2018 and now. So I've had three episodes where, like three rounds of anxiety where it's gotten so bad that I have had like physical symptoms, I want to throw up and all this sort of stuff. So that being aside, one of the times I, no, I wasn't in therapy anymore. Okay, anyways. So I don't have coverage for therapy and therapy out of pocket is really expensive. And because my primary income source is being an independent contractor, yes, I do have a salary from the business, but this is really complicated. It is, anyways, it, it's not actually like, it's enough, but it's not enough to cover every, everything discretionary, right? And like, according to OHIP, therapy is discretionary. Love that for them. So anyways, I was like, I am not gonna be in therapy yet. I don't know, there's like, I have a couple of things, big ticket financial things coming up that I'm like, mm, I don't know, like I can probably gut it out myself with like exercise and reading and whatever and whatever. Cause the market right now is really terrible. So my primary income source is a little bit like, right? I am very lucky I had a very good year, but with everything contract based, you never know year to year, month to month, if things are going to stay the same. So I am trying to be very financially responsible, fiscally responsible, you know, not doing as much girl maths as I used to, to try and justify things because obviously, you know, with there being talks about recession and all of this sort of stuff, I don't want to like use up what I made in case 2024 is not as good or better, you know, just safety first measures. So I was like, okay, I'll gut it out. I'll figure it out because I have gutted it out and figured it out before. However, the Toronto real, like real estate, like board, TREB, um, the Toronto Regional Real Estate, yeah, TREB, T or whatever, TREB, okay? Which is the board I'm a member of, uh, like where my real estate license is parked. Um, and ORIA, which is our governing body, one of our governing bodies, have put in a insurance plan for us self-employed realtors, right? So if you're a licensed realtor in Ontario, you now have a automatic pay, like you have to pay for it, but it's a part of our dues now. So our dues have increased, but we now have healthcare insurance, which covers above and beyond what our OHIP covers. And then I can pay more to have dental coverage, which I might do, but there's still no optometry and there's, and there's like a $750 pharmacare deductible which is great. And then there's like a copay for certain things. So overall really good. But the best part about this is therapy is unlimited therapy. And it's like, I pay $55 a month, but I get like unlimited therapy. So I can have regular sessions and all this sort of stuff covered. So Jan 1, as soon as this goes into effect, I will be putting my ass into therapy because TBH, I think I need it. <laughs> I 
as put together and as normal as I try and present myself on the internet, I have a lot of things I think I need to work on and it is to the point where I can't do it alone. And professional help is probably a great idea. And a lot of my friends are in therapy. I think it's like the borderline millennial Gen Z sort of situation where um, we, I think everybody needs therapy. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna start therapy soon and I will update you guys on that. But I wanna give a little check in and be like, hey, this is what happened. I am better now, so we are Fingers crossed, really good on that for the next little bit, but I have like six days, seven days left, well, 10 days left in the year. And hopefully after that, I'm gonna start therapy. I will get some techniques. I will get to talk through some things. And most importantly, I guess, I wanna talk through things with a third party who is who doesn't know me, who doesn't know the people involved, who doesn't, you know, and I want, I want like that, that vibe. So that is that. And I don't know. I really, I don't, it's kind of interesting. I feel so much better and I hope you guys can tell that I feel a lot better because yeah, I, I was, it was rough for a bit. Anyways, I appreciate you guys for sticking by me and I'm sorry I took like a little time off. I really needed it. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you in the next video.